I'm a tuba judge and I'm so blessed today. Praise God to bring God's word to you now. Today is Friday. Whoa, praise God. I love Fridays. You know why? It gives you an opportunity to go through this message again from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and today, Friday. Now, follow it serially and, and let our understanding begin to come to your heart. Praise God. Now, that's why I'm always excited when it's Friday. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So get engaged with the word of God this weekend. I'm telling you the truth. It'll do you good. Now, are you ready for your daily bread? Say this with me with joy in your heart because it's going to come to you. Say, Father, I demand and I receive now my daily bread. Say this also, every angel that I've been assigned by God concerning my daily bread they are functioning right now in jesus name amen i believe that with you and i declare you will see a miracle today in jesus name amen father we honor you today thank you for your spirit of truth who guides us into every truth lord I declare every burden is lifted right now. Yokes are destroyed completely in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. So we've been talking about living carefree. Why does the Lord want you to live carefree? Because he loves you. And he cares for you, praise God. So he, he wants to take out every care from your life and give you a focus. See, you are so full of cares that you don't see God's focus in your life. You are so full of cares, you don't see what God is doing at all in your life. But God wants to deliver you from that. Yeah, he wants to deliver you from that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So he said, this is how it works. He's calling you into a life of humility. See? He's calling into a life of humility. Let me show you a scripture in Psalm 55. Good. And verse 22. It says, cast thy body upon the Lord. And he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Praise God. Did you see that? He said, cast thy body upon the Lord. So when I pray on this broadcast, I say, bodies are lifted. You have a role to play. Casting off that body. You take it away. You don't just cast it anyway, cast it on the Lord. Praise God. Now, now it's amazing. You know, the Bible says he, he took our sicknesses. He took our infirmity. He himself took our infirmity, our infirmities. He took it away. Now, what does that mean? He doesn't expect you to carry the body of infirmity in your body. So if he doesn't expect me to carry the burden of infirmity in my body, so why am I sick? Why am I suffering high BP? Why am I having running stomach? Why am I dealing with whatever, cancer, um, whatever you can think of. Now, you see, whatever is going on in your life, you have been commanded to do one thing. And what is that? Humility. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. 
So you need to calm down and find out what is that mighty hand of God so that I can bring myself under it. Now, when he says humble yourself under that mighty hand, he is telling you, you bring yourself down to it. So you bend and you know what? So, so Amplify says, lower yourself in your own estimation. So the wisdom you already have, that when you feel this way, go to the doctor. That's a wisdom. That, 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 that's something you know, looking straight. But now he's saying, bring yourself down and put yourself under God's mighty hand. So you want to know, what is God saying concerning this issue? And I feel so sick now. Or oh, my finances are so down. I don't know what to do. The first thing you need to do, bring lower yourself and bring yourself under. The mighty hand of God is simply the word of God. What has God said concerning that issue? When you bring yourself to that place of alignment and put yourself there, he takes the responsibility of lifting you up. And that's what, that's what he said here. He says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain you. Now, another word for this burden is actually gift. Cast your gift over to the Lord and he will sustain you. That's to tell you your gift. Now, what, what is gift? Gift can be your skill. Gift can even be your job, your salary, your money. Cast it over to the Lord and he will sustain you. You, you want, listen, listen, you want to embark on a project that requires lots of finances. And then you look at what you have. It's nothing compared to what you're supposed to do. So what do you do? You say, cast it over to the Lord. Now, how do you cast it over? It's not then you carry the money and throw and say, Lord, take. He saying, bring that money and say, Lord, I want to embark on this project. But you know what? This money will go nowhere. So I'm bringing this money over to you. What do you think I should do with it? <laughs> you, you don't know what you do. You see, the, 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 the Lord, and, and I'm saying this with all um, seriousness, the Lord is just not real to a lot of people. So even when I say things like that, they're like, how ah, wish. You take it before the Lord and say, Lord, I want to build this house, but this money is going nowhere. So this is what I've decided to do, Lord. I bring the money over to you. Now you tell me whatever you want me to do with the money. And when you do that, the same thing, your skill, your, you, you know, you have some gifts. Naturally, you know, you want to think, oh, with my gift, I'll make a lot of money. He's saying, bring that gift all under the Lord. Cast it. Bring it to the Lord. This is the gift that I have. And steady, tell him, Lord, I've seen people make money with this gift. But you know what? I want you to sustain me. So I bring my gifts to you. Tell me what you will have me do with it. And, and the Lord, he sees your heart. He begins to give you instructions. He begins to tell you where to use your gifts. And guess what? Soon. Because he, he will sustain you. Then he says, the next thing he says there is, he shall never suffer. The word suffer also means allow. He shall never suffer or allow the righteous to be moved. So he keeps you firm. And then he sets you on your journey. And guess what? You know, people, may, it may look, and that's why when you come to the Spirit of God or to Christ, you never compare yourself with anybody. You, you never do that. Resist the temptation to compare, of comparing yourself with others. 
Maybe you walk in a certain place, everybody's buying a car, and, and you, you are using your money to take care of your siblings, take care of God's work, doing other things with your money. And then you're just like, oh, wow. Man, it's like I'm the fool in this place. No, you're no fool. Bring your gifts under God's hands. If you're doing what God has commanded you to do, guess what? A season will come when that organization is not able to sustain everybody again. Now, guess what happens then? That is when you are going to start buying your cars and buying your things. And everyone's like, don't you understand what this? They say, they say we'll all be laid off in the next three months. I said, yeah, I know. And you're going to buy a car? God said, I should buy. This guy, it's like you don't know what the time is. I know what the time is. Praise God. The time is, is, is God's time. And, and it's my time of prosperity. It's my time of blessing. Now by that time, the Lord has already helped you. You know, you know what Jesus said about money? He says, use money to make friends. That's what Jesus said. Use, that's, that's the purpose of money. Use money to make friends. Say, make friends with, by means of unrighteous mammon. He's talking about fiscal money, salary, anything money. He says, use it. This is the purpose. Use it to make friends. How do you use money to make friends? You, by the leading of the Lord, he, he will direct you on people to invest in, people to give to. That, that's how you make friends. He's not saying, go bribe somebody. Hey, come and be my friend. I'll take this 100,000 100, there. Just, just so that you be my friend. That's not what he's saying. When you trust the Lord, he will direct you. And, and guess what? You remember Job. Oh, I need to read this scripture to you now. Job chapter 42. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Job chapter 42. Watch this now, verse 10. I want you to follow. Follow, follow this carefully. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. All right. Look at the next verse. This was the secret. This is the secret. Verse 11. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that have been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Now watch this. Every man also gave him a piece of money and everyone an earring of gold. So, thank you Lord. Did you get that? He said, this is how Job became rich. Again, this is how Job got tw twice as much as he had. He says, so the Lord blessed the later end of Job more than his beginning. What was his beginning? He labored for it. He worked for his money. But you see, the later end of Job, he didn't work for his money. Everyone Job had made friends with. With, by means of that unrighteous mammon that he had. Everyone, because Job was a giver. If you read the book of Job, you know, his friends accused him. He said, no, 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 you can't tell me about giving to the poor. I did that very well. So when Job was making money, unrighteous mammon, he used his money to make friends. Now that's the reason God had to bring that temptation to him. Because he was qualified to enter into this rest and this blessing. But Job wouldn't let go. So God had to like, Job, I know what to do to you. Satan... Go and visit Job. And after everything, the Bible says everyone that ever knew Job, everyone that he was acquaintance to, they came to see him. Everyone came with money. Everyone came with gold. And he said, this, is, this was how God blessed the later end of Job more than the beginning. Job got to that point where he had to cast all his cares now. <laughs> see? And when God tested him, the last test, he said, Job, pray for your friends. These friends that, these, these, these people that were accusing me falsely, these people. Lord, if he said I should pray for my friends, 
I pray for them. I cast all the cares of my mind over to you. So I should pray for them. I pray for my friends. When God said, yeah. He began to command all men to come to church. Praise God. Listen, as you humble yourself under God's mighty hand, casting every care, so the Lord is commanding men to respond to you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare that this weekend, there's going to be an overflow of wealth coming to your house. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have the best weekend ever. I love you dearly. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. God bless you. Bye-bye.